It's 11 minutes past the hour of 7, and those were the top business news items for this morning. When we return, we have Mr. Eric Fabella, National Youth Coordinator of the Citizens Drug Watch, and Cecile, next month, the Drug Watch will launch a 24-hour service for drug services. Yes, and it's a telephone service. And you know what's interesting is uh, Mr. Fabella was saying that um, most of the volunteers that are coming in are college students, and that's easier to reach the younger generation. That's right. If you're a little closer to home. And if parents, if you have sons or relatives yes. who are drug dependents and you need the help of some drug coordinators, please yes. call the Drug Watch Foundation. Okay, yes. we will have this interview with Mon right after this. You're watching Business Today. Good morning. Now we're going to discuss a subject that is a matter of serious concern for a lot of parents, especially parents whose children are in the age of about what, 10, 11, 12, and they're in school. It's a matter of drugs. And to help us discuss this subject is another young person. His name is Mr. Eric Fabella. He's the National Youth Coordinator of the Citizens Drug Watch. Good morning, Eric. Welcome Good morning, to the show. Po. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Eric, I understand, you know, let's start with the situation of what is the situation as far as drug use or abuse is concerned. Because we have this rather alarming report that came out in the newspapers a couple of days ago saying that every day, 22 drug-related deaths and 50 crimes crimes against property are committed, why rape linked to drug addiction occurs every 19 hours. And this is from you, I mean, the Citizens Drug Watch Foundation. Yes. Uh, what is happening? Siguro, before I go into that, I would like to just mention the top five drugs that are being abused as of today. You know? We have marijuana, which is still number one uh, because of its uh, readily available, uh, the, the readily available quantities that are that are in the Philippines. Do people still do it in their backyard? Oh, no, <laughs> it's possible, kaya napaka-available po niya. At the okay. same time, mas mura po siya sa shabu. Shabu okay. comes in second, mm -hmm. and after that, we have zero preparations. Mm. And we also have psychotropic substances such as tranquilizers. And then lastly, we have volatile or industrial preparations. Uh, the more popular one is... Ay, yung mga, uh, ano, yung mga rugby rugby. Opo, yun po, <laughs> rugby. But, ano, it's, it's kind of, uh, isn't it a bit worrisome that Shabu is a uh, very high number two? Eh? Shabu is a very potent drug. Yes. Uh, malakas ang tama uh, talaga sa, ano, sa gumagamit nito. Mm -hmm. How prevalent is Shabu here in the Philippines? The problem? Yes. Well, Shabu makes up uh, for... Uh, uh, because in the Philippines, the drug problem is composed of 80% uh, marijuana and Shabu and 20% the, uh, the other drugs. I see. Yeah. I see. Oh. Okay. Anong profile? For example, if I were to ask you, anong demographic profile, what is the typical drug user here in the country? Mm -hmm. The Dangerous Drugs Board has come up with a profile regarding the drug user. The average age of the drug user has been found to be 24. 24? Yes. Mm -hmm. There are more male users than female. The proportion is 10 is to 1. Wow. We will see this uh, in the drug rehabilitation centers. Okay. Uh -huh. Yes. And aside from that... May trabaho uh, walang trabaho? Unemployed, kadalasan. I see. I okay. see. Okay. Now, this is a situation, I mean, I mean Parents have long been uh, scared of this kind of problem. Uh, now you're setting up a 24-hour telephone counseling service uh, next month. Yes. Uh, what preparations are you doing for this particular service? We've been conducting a series of seminars involving the, uh, the training of the counselors that we will uh, employ uh -huh. for this uh, center. Sino sino bang mga counselor ang kinukuha niya? Actually po, para po mas uh, effective po, maganda kung lahat ng mga age levels maku uh -huh. natin. Mm -hmm. So that kung meron po tayong caller na may problema, kahit ano po ang age niya, we can refer him to a more or less peer, parang peer counselor. Okay. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But I understand even now you're getting calls already. Meron po tayong mga calls ngayon. Pero ang calls po natin na tinatanggap ngayon ay uh, police related. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So people can call in. Ay mga nagsusumbong, halimbawa? Oo, oh, yung nagsusumbong, oo. Oh, okay. Yeah. Pero itong sinasabi niyong bagong servisyong itatayo niyo, ito yung mga halimbawa, drug user mismo? Pwedeng drug user. Pwede rin yung mga family members ng drug users na apektado, kagaya po ng mga asawa. Marami pong pumupunta sa opisina na mga asawa po sila, usually the wives, 
who are being uh, violently uh, assaulted by Ay, their husbands. Know, that, com that compounds the situation. No? Yes. Uh, nagiging nagkakaroon pa ng family abuse dito sa mga problema ito. Mm -hmm. Pero halimbawa, sige, sabihin natin ako, drug user ako, bakit naman ako tatawag sa inyo? Uh, well, siguro, una-una, we provide anonymity kasi yung mga ibang agencies na alam po natin, uh, usually they are with the government and ang mga ang mga harap po kadalasan ay police. Mga police. <laughs> medyo ka so siguro baka medyo <laughs> okay. hindi masyadong ano. O kung minsan naman kung di police ang dami mong forms na ipi-fill out. <laughs> Pero alam ba, sige, tumawag ako sa inyo. Ano mangyayari? I mean, what kind of service do you, do you want to provide the people in this kind of situation? We want to be able to give the proper advice kasi there there are people who don't know what to do lalo na pag merong pag uh, nalulung na sila sa uh, pinagbabawal na gamot tapos uh, hindi po nila alam anong gagawin nila saan po sila pupunta mm -hmm. ano pong uh, agency ang lalapitan nila kung gusto nila magparehabilitate okay. so ito po ang ating i-offer we offer refera programs to the various drug rehabilitation centers mm -hmm. private or government okay. and alimbawa po kung meron pong drug activity nga po sa lugar nila pwede nilang i-report po namin i-report sa amin at kami po ang magre-refer sa proper law enforcement agency. So, Eric, nakakatulong ba talaga ito? Nakakatulong. From the experience, let's say, you're setting up one, but there are several such services now operating here in the country, mm -hmm. and also, of course, abroad, may the fairly developed na system niya. Um, nakakatulong ba talaga ito sa drug user? Ito nga rin ang klaseng service. Kasi po, makikita natin na uh, marami rin po mga ganitong klaseng uri ng uh, counseling centers, hindi lang po sa drugs, no? Yung mga 24-hour centers, parang yung dial a friend pa, parang mga ganon. Kahit sakit sa puso, meron natin mga dial Meron na po. <laughs> meron so, siguro we're just trying to be more uh, specialized. Yes. We want to offer uh, sp uh, specialized advice and uh, counseling to the people who have problems. Eh, paano yan? Uh, halimbawa, eh, where do you choose your vol ano, volunteers pa ito? Are you going to employ them? Halimbawa, hindi ba mahirap itong trabaho ng pagka-counseling sa telepon? Hindi naman po. Marami na pong nag-ano eh, nag-commit uh, Uh -huh. Voluntarily, nung nalaman nilang gusto, gusto ng foundation na magtayo ng counseling and crisis center. Uh -huh. Okay. So, anong klaseng tao ito? Mga matanda, may mga bata, etc. Et Tumihan po mga diba, bata. Hindi ba may screening process kayo dyan para sa ano? Meron naman. Okay. So, how many volunteers do you have right now? Baka may, may ibang mga tao dito na, na, na nanonood sa ating yun, na gusto mag-volunteer sa inyo. Do you have enough volunteers already? We have a lot of volunteers already, pero siyempre, we we can you know we can make do with more. Okay. It would be better if we had more. Ah, sige. Now you're setting this service up here in Metro Manila. What yes. about the other cities na in the Philippines? Sana ba sa Cebu, o sa Davao, o sa Dagupa? Sana matayo po natin with the help of a lot of people, mm -hmm. especially our uh, private sector. Pero right now we're going to concentrate in in Metro Manila precisely because there was this study conducted by the Dangerous Drugs Board uh -huh. that Metro Manila now uh, 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 this consists of 60% of the total drug market. Mm. So nandito po sa National Capital Region ang pinakamaraming mga drug users, okay. drug pushers, and drugs. Oh, sige. So before we end, ano ba yung mga telepono ninyo? Um, ang phone number po natin is 8930260 and 8140394. Ah, lang ng Eric kasi medyo mabilis yun. Let's let's repeat that so that you know people when uh, when will you start your service? Hopefully by September after we train the counselors. I see when in September any particular date so you know uh, people can watch out when you go get online. Siguro baka the first week of September. First week of September. Can you repeat those uh, numbers again Eric for the benefit uh, of our viewers? The numbers are 8930260.
to you by
ng
kaagapay ng crisis para tumuan ang mga on a confidential level. 